apparently we're live. Hi, this is Erica with the Poindexter Real Estate Group. I want to welcome you to the first episode of What Can I Buy In? And today we're talking to Caton with Close with Caton in Twin Cities, uh, Minnesota. So Minneapolis, St. Paul area. And I have like one of my very, very, very best friends lives out there. And my mother-in-law is from St. Paul. So it's really fun to kind of see a little bit more about the area. I visited one time and it was November and, oh, it was, <laughs> and that was my first experience with Minnesota. But I know we did. The only things that um, I remember, I was 19, I think my uncle used to live there and uh, I visited the mall because I was 19. Oh. So it was really important to me that I went to the mall and that's all I remember about it and snow. <laughs> And we were driving from somewhere, like we were visiting some little town and we were driving back and it was like the first time I was ever driving in a snowstorm. So <laughs> that's all I know about Minnesota. So I was so excited to talk to you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about like what you love living in, about, like blah, blah, blah. what you love about living in Minnesota and what are your kind of favorite things about um the communities that you serve well i've lived here my i've lived in the state of minnesota my entire life so i'm a true native minnesotan and um some of the things i love most about the twin cities you know i i have seen it there just the entire twin cities metro has evolved quite a bit when i was a child growing up in what is now kind of a first to third tier suburb, it was still very much a farming community. And now our metropolitan is fairly large. Although one of the things that I really appreciate about the Twin Cities is from downtown Minneapolis or St. Paul, within really about 30 to 40 miles, you'll be in a more rural um, space. You could be on a hobby farm and still be commuting to Minneapolis. You could be living on a lake and still drive to a Twins game and get back home in an hour. So that kind of, I think as far as the connectivity between our communities and the cosmopolitan aspects of a city, that's really nice about the Twin Cities. So it's similar, actually it's similar to Sacramento. So I work in a suburb of Sacramento mm -hmm. and I'm about two hours from Lake Tahoe and about two hours to the beach and about two hours from San Francisco. So we can get pretty much anywhere we want and still have that. And uh, there's even within 30 minutes, I mean, you can get to like little farming towns and things like that. Um, so it's, it's, we love it for that for sure. Cause you get different experiences and you're not stuck in a big city. Um, but you can still access those things if you want to. So I guess let's get right into it. I want to show, uh, the world, some cool things that you can buy. Um, our median price point is about 450 to 500,000 here in Placer County. So I wanted to use that number and kind of explore different places across the country. So here we are, and we're going to see what you can buy in Minnesota for $500,000. And I think it's kind of fun. Like I'm super stoked to, to see. And then um, as we go, I think we'll just show like the pictures of the house and stuff like that. And then you can kind of tell us about the community that this particular house happens to land in. Sure. So let me pull it up. That That's why you chose that price point. I was curious about that. Yeah. So I chose Brilliant. that price point because um, that's actually all you can get here. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted um, people to be able to see like, what the different affordability really looked like. Um, and we do have, you know, we do, it's California and, and the, the God on his truth is not everybody believes and loves California politics. And so we get people who leave quite often. And for me, I wanted to, if, if you're going to be leaving the area, who can you connect with and who are my partners so that 
my clients have somebody that they can trust um, to move to these different places. And part of my business, if I'm selling your home and, and I'm helping you relocate, um, is these strong business partnerships that I have across the country. I mean, that's how we met in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to show people like what that looks like for them. Because a lot of times people ask me like, I'd love to leave, but I don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. So that's where this all got this was born from. Mm -hmm. So this is 1208 Lakeview Avenue South. And is this in Minneapolis? Yes, this is in proper. Minneapolis. This is in kind of Minneapolis proper, if you will. If you think about a city community, this would be one, this Bryn Mawr neighborhood. It's near what we call the lakes. If you're watching a sports game or see those landscapes they show of the downtown, this would be um, the pocket of lakes that uh, have always been popular. There's a lot of history behind them. So that's very special. I think about the Twin Cities as well. We've always really protected our green spaces and had a really deep and strongly rooted like commitment to keeping the environment consistent from the city through the suburbs. Um, so you'll notice in for most of these properties, it's a pretty, given the given the state, <laughs> it's a pretty lush feeling as you drive through these neighborhoods. Um, this So this is a historic home. It was built in um, like 19, late 1920s, Tudor. You'll see a lot of these in Minneapolis. And if you scroll down, this one has, this one has been really well maintained. Well, you wanna see more pictures? Yeah. I'm sorry. Look at the inside, that's so pretty. Mm -hmm. I love all these little cutouts and stuff. So we have neighborhoods here that are older. Um, they're called the Fabulous 40s. Actually, it's, it's Sacramento City proper. So some of the biggest, old, the oldest, biggest homes are in the Fabulous 40s and the architecture is very similar to the inside of this. I don't know that I've seen anything with that exterior look around here. Now I'm gonna have to take a look down there, but. Okay. Yeah, that's, really a really, that's a really cool. really popular look, especially in the in the cities. That Tudor, you'll see. And so this is going to be completely the redone. Then, so this yeah. is something that's going to be completely. You, you don't have to touch anything. Mm -hmm. Yep, very well maintained and updated. It's kept the kind of the warmth and charm of that historic home, yet completely modern and comfortable. Kind of a timeless look. So cute. Yeah. Trying to get outside. I'm gonna yeah. click through and get outside. And that one, that one has been on the market for five days, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's not going under contract soon. So, about how long? What's your average days on market? About a week right now? Ooh, yeah, I would. Say, I would say. I think the stats show a little bit higher day count, but the reality is, a properly priced home is going within the first four days, definitely. And are you seeing a lot of the coastal states moving inward? Because I find a lot of my clients are moving towards the middle of the country for pricing and like I said, for politics and for lifestyle and things like that. And as much as we have the most perfect weather on all the land, um, they're giving that up. I mean, for for being able to buy something like this and, and be in a different, a whole different kind of place. Mm -hmm. Is this a sauna? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I always say that. Um, in a bag. Yeah. Uh, so, so I what I am noticing as far as as far as um, movement outside of just upsizing, downsizing, different uh, use of space, you know, um, normal moving patterns, is people moving kind of like you were discussing at the beginning, Erica, like towards family members so either older you know parents moving where their adult children now live for instance i'm working with three out-of-state buyers right now one is a uh, you know some grandparents and their son moved here and now their grandkids are here and so they are looking for a condo so they can spend more time with them um another is a young man and his sister lives here and has some children and he's moving from um, Washington here back to this area. He's never lived here before to be by his sister. So I'm seeing things like that. Also, 
there has been a renewed interest in the Twin Cities, I would say in properties that offer a little bit more space. So some of the properties that we'll look at next um, are gaining popularity. I think acreage, because like I was describing, it's pretty readily available and accessible for downtown communities, suburban communities. So now with people having more options to work at home and do school at home, I'm seeing people moving out where there's more space. More, yeah, so, more interest in that for sure. Yeah, we're we're yeah. feeling the same. So San Francisco, so we're kind of a feeder for San Francisco because we're commuting distance to San Francisco. So you have like an hour and a half to two hour drive, depending on the time of day. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people would commute two or three days a week into San Francisco. And that was happening anyways. Mm -hmm. And now Facebook, Google, all of those have told their employees, like you can go move and work anywhere indefinitely. And so we've seen a lot of that coming in. Um, San Francisco for the first time has apartment vacancies that they haven't ever seen in a really long time because people are like, why am I going to rent a $4,500 apartment when I can go down to Roseville and buy a house for that? You know, so Mm -hmm. Let's look at Big Lake. Let me see if I can share it again. Okay. Can you do the next one? I'm getting good at this. Oh, you want to do? Okay. What? Well, then the other one would be like stepping out from the city. So that one was the city. The other, the other Plymouth one would be a suburb, and then this would be a further out suburb. But that we'll just jump. Okay. Up. So let me see if I can. Let me just change. I'll change the window. Hold on. I just have to change it. Let's see. We'll take that one off. And then we want to uh, do this. So this next one is, we can do the other one too. But this next one is um, Plymouth, which I would say is like a third tier suburb in the Twin Cities. Very very typical kind of standard twin cities suburb um sorry where, where, yeah, this, where you're gonna have it's a little bit newer suburb because it is i'd say like a tier three um you know uh, the school district is well thought of you can this is definitely you know where you're gonna find your three car garage four bedrooms up and a walkout basement kind of the raise your kids type homes um, yeah, let's see. How big is this for for five hundred thousand? What is the square footage? Four four thousand forty nine square feet. This here would be over a million. Wow! But you're like half yeah. half cost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something like this. There, there's stuff like this here for sure. But um, is this got any like property or like a little bit of not even an acre, but maybe a little bit of space? Yeah. <laughs> Probably got about, I would say it's probably about a third. That's usually, yeah. Okay. That's a standard lot. That's a standard suburban lot. So that's going to give you, again, it's going to give you like room to fence your backyard, have your kids run and play. You could probably put a pool in if you wanted. Um, good architecture on this one. Oh, yeah, that's Not super pretty. Typical of, of the suburbs, I'd say this is a little more atypical. Here in a lot of the homes, you're just gonna see a lot of oak. Um, that's a common comment that people moving in from out of state make is lots of our trim and doors and cabinets are kind of a golden oak color, um, similar to that, but a little more orange. So that's- <laughs> And that's all the stuff we're ripping out. Very palatable. Um, yeah, so this this is going to be again if you take a you know circle and just draw it around the Twin Cities from Plymouth, this would also maybe be like Woodbury out east, might be similar to what is similar to like Apple Valley in the south. Um, you're going to have Target and Home Depot on every corner. Your you know chain of restaurants. This is that kind of living here. How oh, pretty. So what was I going to ask? How how common is it for someone to put a pool in a home like this? Like, is there all like in Minnesota, right? How many pool days do you get? <laughs> I know it's it's you're either a pool person or you're not a pool person. The net neutral here as far as investment is pretty much 
like I said, net neutral, I'd say it's zero. It's not necessarily a benefit, but it's not necessarily a con either. Um, some people are passionate. I have a couple families that all they want is a house with a pool. Um, other people, my friend bought a house with a pool in the woods and she called me this spring to ask how much it would be to fill the pool. And she's got young kids that she's raising, but the pool was yeah. completely full of leaves and they weren't getting a lot of use out of it. And part of their motivation for moving was to have a pool. So that kind of made me laugh. Um, they ended up, <laughs> up not filling it, but. Um, this is kind of cool. Like it's a sauna and a hot tub and like probably a steam shower of some kind, which seems more useful in Minnesota yeah, then yeah. as a pool. <laughs> run out into the snow and then run into your sauna downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is, we don't have basement. So this is cool. We don't have basements and very rarely, I mean, every once in a while we'll get a basement, but finished basements in this kind of space, we don't really have here. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's pretty typical, pretty typical. I mean, every house has a basement. Almost every house has a basement. Um, and most at this point are finished, I would say. Yeah. Just for just the how, yeah, when you're in, obviously, as you head out to new construction, that's not as much the case, but um, yeah. So they're not often, putting, they're not putting basements in the newer properties as much? Well, no, they are, but they're not finished. Is what I meant. So, to say. so, what's the purpose of a basement other than storage? Um, I know that I, seems like a weird question, but yeah, a lot of it has to do with the climate and and that and that structural foundation. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. We just now, now we're doing a lot, like I'm sure across the country, the slab on grade detach townhome. That's a new kind of construction that we're seeing here in the last probably ten years. See, we just put a slab and stick a house on top of it. We don't ever go. It's it's never, never so a basement. You have, where's your furnace and things generally? Um, So like my house, I live in an older house in Rockland. I have a, like a little small house. We have a, there's a combined unit that's on the roof, which okay. I guess in Minnesota that wouldn't work because you have snow. Yeah. Um, a lot of times the furnace will be in like the crawl space up in the, like we don't have real attics usually either, but in a crawl space type on top, um, AC units generally like the side of the house, like on the side yard and stuff, but okay. thinking about it, right. Cause I've never lived in that kind of climate. It would freeze yeah. up. That wouldn't make yeah. any sense. So yeah. that's why the basement makes sense is I guess you have to put all of that stuff in the building, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, that would not survive. Learn outside. something new every day. Air conditioners are outside. Outside of that, <laughs> nope. <everything laughs> so do you even, I mean, what's the summer, what's the summer climate like? I mean, I, I we all know Minnesota's cold, but hot is what? <laughs> hot, very hot. 90? Yeah. Oh, 90s, definitely. This, this summer was a little bit more moderate, but we... So maybe, I don't know how many days we hit 100, but we'll go through very hot stretches, very hot. Like I would have never, I would have never picked 100. I would have yeah. never. I would have thought mm -hmm. that it's just like, you know, 80s maybe or something. Mm -hmm. But that's fun. We don't have a real four seasons. We have not, we don't have like true spring and true fall, hardly at all. And then winter's really just rain. So. Okay. Yeah, we definitely have very stereotypical four seasons, right? Now the leaves are changing color. Um, yeah. Birds are migrating, the whole the whole thing. So yeah, yeah summer, summer is very hot, not always very comfortable, very humid. Um, so I would say Minnesota has very extreme temperatures, very hot and humid, and lots of mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, we... I mean, that's the thing. And that's why people pay. I mean, that's why people pay to live here, right? Like we mm -hmm. have, I mean, it gets hot. I mean, we get to like 110 sometimes, but it's a dry heat. We always like to say like, we don't have the humidity hardly at all. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents live in Texas. And so sometimes when it is humid, I'm like, take your weather back. Get rid of it. 
Um, and then winter time, I mean, we get to fifties, forties sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's rainy. And if we get kind of wet, sleety stuff, like that's super fun for everybody. Um, but to get to the snow, you have to go to Tahoe. Um, you, you can get to a snowy area. Um, you can get to a snowy area, like, um, within an hour. So, okay. Yeah. So it's pretty like, it's, it's pretty middle of the road. And a lot of things people do complain about is that we don't have a season. Like it's just, mm -hmm. even right now, you know, today's the first day of fall. Um, mm -hmm. and it's going to be 90. <laughs> So we don't really get that. And then all of a sudden it'll be like mid October. We'll finally get rain. And then okay. November it'll be super rainy. And it's like, that's all of our whole fall season. And the same thing happens in the spring. Like suddenly it's 80 and then now it's spring and then it's hot again. So we don't really get all of that um, fun stuff. So uh, Nicole is commenting that same thing as I said. It, when we have humidity, we're very unhappy. We're not used to it. It's sticky. It's weird. We're not, you know. And that's what everybody says about my parents when they first moved to Texas. They're like, that's the only thing they really had to acclimate to was the humidity. But so the last yeah, house. They say in Minnesota, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes and it'll be different. So ours is accurate. consistently the same. Um, I need to get my screen up. So okay, so that, was, so that was Plymouth. And now we're going out. So this is Big Lake. I chose this because it's kind of got that kind of stereotypical Minnesota cabin, um, outdoorsy feel. This is, I'd say, not a typical property um, at this price point. And I think, yeah, this one was on almost three acres, not on water. But it's it's five it's five hundred and fifteen thousand okay. on almost three acres, two thousand yep. square feet. No. Um, and is this more or less than you'd expect to spend in the the rural areas? Well, this also was built in two thousand, so this okay. is a fairly new home. Um, with that acreage and the total finished square footage, I'd say this is probably not good, and this won't sell at this price. Would be my it'll guess. be lower it'll be lower yep it'll be lower but this is what it's on the market for right now so this kitchen so this kitchen right here is this something people want in a kitchen because this feels like like small for this size mm -hmm. of house to me mm -hmm. and kind of very interior without much natural light it looks like yeah so yeah. that's interesting to see because, I mean, even in, we have areas that will have similar style properties, but like you said, it, people are wanting bigger windows. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, when you see it finally sell, let me know what it finally sells for. I'd just be curious. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep my eye on it. <laughs> so this has been on the market a while because I see snow. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know it's 245 days and they did do a price reduction. I don't see what it is on my thing I printed, but, um, so would somebody be looking for this much wood in this kind of property? Like with the closets and everything, like wood floor to ceiling, like, is that what they want when they live out there or do they want something more modern? Well, I would say it's a combination of the two. Lots of times when people are looking at in this part of the twin cities out in those more rural areas, they are looking for something a little more unique than a property that looks like it would be in like Plymouth, um, but it's 50-50. There's plenty of um, new homes in this area that look more like a suburban home and lots of new construction. And this is a basement mm -hmm. again, right? This mm -hmm. is the basement. Yeah. So this is all finished and they have access to the outdoors from the basement, which this like tree or rock wall or whatever that is looks super cool. Um, so this oh, one looks like it's probably a matter of while these finishes and some of the choices they made when they built this meant something to them and they saw value in them. Now the buyers aren't really seeing maybe that same price point. Maybe they overspent when they built. 
Look at this front though. That is what I would want the front to look like for sure. I'd want that full on cabin. If I'm going to live on property, that's how I want it to feel when I come home. That's for sure. Oh, that's what we were looking at. I think from the basement was maybe this. Oh, mm -hmm. maybe fireplace. I'm not sure. But yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at that porch. Yeah, that's they need, they need to stage some rocking chairs and lemonade on this porch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause that's what I would do. So this is the basement. So that's the wall that we were looking at. And then there's decks up top. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that this doesn't have that I would expect to find on that amount of acreage and at this price point would be like a pole barn, some sort of outbuilding. Because oftentimes you're going to have, you know, toys and equipment that you're using. So this doesn't have that either. And you definitely could find a great house on acreage with a pole barn for around 500000 I just closed on some um, new construction on five acres with a ginormous pole barn. And it was not much more than five hundred. I feel like I don't know where we are in the house anymore. Did I skip it? Oh, no. I was trying to see if there was more pictures. I think that, oh, no, I don't know. Oh, no, we went through them. Okay. I was trying to see it's because the way I have my screen, I couldn't see where I was at, but I was trying to find um, more of the property. Um, we do a lot of, I don't, I don't know how, like a lot of drone when it no. comes to stuff like this, a lot of drones so you can see the property and full like that kind of stuff. So do you guys usually use that kind of thing for marketing? Yeah, for something like this, you definitely should. Yeah. yeah. For that Plymouth home that we looked at, no, because it's, I mean, really you can, they're pretty straightforward as far as the lots are concerned, unless there is some sort of significant feature nearby, like, maybe that Minneapolis one to highlight proximity to the lake. When I've had properties that are close to large parks or things like that, then I'll definitely do drone photography. Um, and then when you're looking at acreage and things, definitely drone, video drone. Yeah, you want to see like what the parcel looks like and how much usable space you have compared to what, I mean, our stuff that's on acreage that I work in a lot is, is in kind of mountainous areas. So okay. sometimes you could have 15 acres, but three is the only real usable. And then you have a view and then it all kind of comes down a hill. So we have to use drone to really see what that property looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I had a property in, in Forest Hill that I just sold it closed for 520. And it was a similar square footage to that, about 2,300 square feet on about an acre and a half okay. um but the property kind of slopey you know it really wouldn't be proper for like good property for horses or anything maybe goats and um you know chickens or something but it's not really like farmable um and it does snow up there so that particular part of you know it's about 45 minutes for me and it, it gets snow but they'll snow and then it melts it's not really like stick around snow like okay. you've got so that's yeah. super fun so well thank you so much for oh, like yeah. hanging yeah. out with me and doing this i i this was like a like i told you it was like just an idea that popped in my head and you were like on board to give it a cool. shot and it, it turned out great and it was a lot of fun and i look forward to finding more communities um if you're out there and you're watching this and you're interested in a certain part of the country i would love to to highlight that for you um this is going to be a really fun series and thank you so much Katen, for joining me and um making it work yeah my pleasure thanks for the invitation you're welcome have a great day oh and if if uh if you're out there and you want to move to minnesota let me know i'll get you in touch with Katen, um and we'll put her information too in the in the description of the video so if you're interested let her know that you saw the video and reach out yeah, perfect Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.